the metric and imperial system which is better um in from from what i know i think is i think the only the united states use the imperial system or is it the metric system which one is it? okay oh i'm actually like i know what i know the concept of both of them but just i'm kind of mixing the names <laughs> like i think we use the metric system the british we in my country like um i think we use the metric system while um the united states use the imperial system <laughs> actually fun fact what's even made me to actually differentiate this thing right now is i just remembered in pop fiction where samuel jackson with um john travolta when he, he was trying to explain his time in europe and um I, I think a lot of you guys know that scene because i think that is a very very popular movie that almost everybody has watched so um i think yeah i'm right metric system america imperial system for some reason i don't know why i think it was the british that brought the imperial system to us but for for some reason the us still kept using it after independence i really don't understand how that's how that happened but whatever um without wasting any more time let's get right into it the time has finally arrived the comment mm. section demanding imperial and metric units has gone on too long. There can only be one measurement system. The British imperial system, <laughs> like everything British, is based on antiquated units of measurement, like measuring your country's importance by counting the number of countries you have invaded and pillaged. <laughs> A measurement that made sense 100 years ago, but it's time to move on. Uh, Weirdly, that's the funny. British have mostly moved on from this method of measurement. Yeah. And it is instead Americans who insist on holding on to it. Well, Makes America, no sense. Liberia, and Myanmar, a prestigious oh. trio. I thought it was only the US. I can already hear the people who Myanmar, why are they using masks in the comments. There are two kinds of countries, those that use the metric system and those that landed on the moon. You know who led the design team for the Saturn V? This guy. Listen to that deep Alabama accent. It's the amount of fuel and the numbers of motors. An American through and through Ignore this photo of him. Those are just some German friends he made while on gap year in Europe. Look at all his friends. Let's count <laughs> gap year. <laughs> One, two, three, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. nine friends. A popular man. This Alabama native used metric. In fact, he despised British units. So much so that he designed a rocket during his gap year to fly to England to show them how great the metric system was. The Saturn V was designed, like nearly everything in NASA at the time, with a mixture of both metric and imperial units. Just read the mission reports for Apollo 11 for proof of this. It switches between inches and centimeters constantly. It's a mess. Anyone working with this report would have had to be hyper aware of what unit of measurement they were using. Most of the design and science work That's was crazy. done in metric before being converted to Imperial for the manufacturing and operational staff. One of the most mind-boggling examples of this is the guidance computer. It was coded in metric. Meters and kilograms are the language of science, but to ensure the astronauts could intuitively understand what those calculations meant, the displays inside the lunar module had to be displayed in British Imperial units. So even back then, when computer power was extremely limited, the engineers had to waste precious computational time and power to conversion. And this isn't just a waste of computation power. Errors in conversion have led to an insane number of accidents through the years, some of the most notable being in NASA. In December 1998, the Mars Climate Orbiter took off from Cape Canaveral aboard its Delta II rocket. Over the course of its nine and a half month journey, the orbiter needed to complete trajectory correction maneuvers to bring it into an optimal orbit insertion altitude of 226 kilometers. However, as the time grew closer, calculations showed that the orbiter was entering Mars orbit in a far lower altitude, so low that it was likely going to strike the atmosphere and huh. violently tear itself apart. This is exactly what happened. So what went wrong? The orbiter was coded with metric units so the thruster control unit was working with the metric unit for impulse newton seconds but the controller was being supplied with pound four seconds which differs by a conversion factor of 4.45 wow a massive discrepancy 
a discrepancy that destroyed that is too much a discrepancy itself. $28 million dollar project. In 1983, an Air Canada flight they give me the money Montreal instead. ran out of fuel halfway to its destination in Edmonton. Why? The ground because of the, yeah. 22,500 kilograms of fuel was needed for the flight. They, however, needed to calculate how many liters were needed to be pumped. So, they used the density ratio to convert the weight measurement to a volume measurement, but they used the 1.77 density ratio, which was pounds per liter, instead of the correct ratio of 0.8 kilograms Kilogram per liter, <laughs> resulting in less than half the required fuel wow. being pumped aboard. That is Luckily, crazy. the pilot managed to glide the plane down to an abandoned airfield. That is that crazy, man. Of a conversion error could have resulted in a catastrophic loss of life. These are two cautionary tales with disastrous consequences. But it tells you nothing of the silent screams into the void every engineer in the world lets out when they are forced to work with both units. It's just an unnecessary pain in the ass we could all do without. This is the reason we need to choose one measurement system. Mixing units not only is tempting fate with conversion errors, but it costs an untold number of hours for scientists and engineers around the world, banging their head. By the way, why, why is the USC using it? Like, I don't, I really do not understand it. I tried to thought it was only the US, but I didn't know that Liberia, okay, Liberia was colonized by the US, right? So, um, okay, that makes sense. Myanmar, I don't understand why the hell Myanmar is, is using it as well. So, like, why, why is the US using it? Those other two countries don't really matter. Why is the US still using it? Makes no sense. I, the rest of the world is using this metric system. Why is the U.S. using the British imperial system? Why? It sounds kind of cooler, though. No, when you, if I try to say that, okay, this guy weighs two hundred pounds, or this guy weighs one hundred and fifty kg, uh, the pounds sound a bit better. It sounds, I don't know, it sounds a bit cooler, though. Kind of like when you're talking about human being weighing kg, I start thinking of bags of rice. Or bags of <laughs> beans or something, or bags of whatever. But uh, a human being wearing pounds sounds a bit cooler. I, in my in my head, though, in my head, I know maybe to other people it may not be. Untold number of hours for scientists and engineers around the world banging their head against tables when they could be using that time for something more productive. Yeah, I could end the video there, but we need to really hammer home why metric units are the superior units. So why is it better? Well, let's start with the fundamental unit of measurement. There are seven base units of measurement, and with these seven, we can measure everything in the universe. Think of them like the three primary colors of light. With these three colors, we can create any color in the universe by mixing them in just the correct proportions. We can do the same with these fundamental units of measurement. They are time, length, mass, temperature, electric current, chemical amount, and luminous intensity. With these measures, we can describe our universe. Velocity is a combination of length and time, volume is length cubed, density is volume combined with mass. These measurements are the language of the universe. So let's see how the imperial system handles a very simple one, length. An inch is a standard unit of measurement for length in the imperial system. Let's imagine a scenario. You are designing a railing for a one mile long bridge. You, as a skilled and knowledgeable engineer, know that two half inch bolts are more than enough to secure the railing down. The posts of the railing are six feet apart. All right, how many inches are there in a foot? 12? So that's 72 inches. Every 72 inches we need two bolts. Our bridge is one mile long. Yeah. How many feet is that? I don't know off the top of my head, and a quick Google search tells me it's <laughs> 5,280 feet. Yeah. What's 12 inches by 5,080? That's 63,360 inches. Divide that by 72, that's 880. So we need to order 1,760 half inch bolts. That felt cumbersome. Why do I need to remember all these numbers? Because Imperial is a convoluted mess of measurement units yeah. invented by people who married their cousins. <laughs> now, let's see how much easier that is in metric. How many millimeters are there in a meter? It's in the name. Milli, 1000. Now, yeah. how many meters are there in a kilometer? Once again, it's in the damn name. Kilo, 1000. Yeah. Given a measurement in kilometers but want meters, 
Just shift the decimal place over. Yeah, three very places. easy. Like no seriously. Needed. There is no room for error. It's a simple better oh, system. Just put the Even decimal within points. Imperial, you have to constantly convert your units. Ounces to pounds, pounds to imperial what? tons, which for some reason differs from a metric ton by 1.6%. Again, in metric, there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram and 1,000 kilograms in a ton. In imperial, there are 16 ounces in a pound and 2,240 pounds what? in an imperial ton. It's Why? too convoluted. even following the It's just too convoluted. Like, what the hell? Like, look at one, like, it's. It's not round figures like for example it's um you know as you, say, as you were talking about the millimeters centimeters centimeters to kilometers and all that stuff like it's round figures one thousand one thousand you know this one like is one thousand two hundred and sixty like what the hell is so all over the place no i mean if I, if I if i was studying mathematics in the united states my head would have been spinning around the world seriously what the hell are 16 ounces in a pound and 2,240 pounds in an imperial ton. Why? You aren't even following the same conversion conventions as your other units. This is insanely cumbersome. The chances of conversion errors even within your own damn system is high. Never mind having to convert to metric. You <laughs> this know guy is definitely not American. <laughs> the word for mass and weight in the imperial system is the same. Why? Because the pound was invented before we knew what gravity was. That's why. We just assumed mass and weight were the same thing when they aren't. So we have to specify in Imperial whether we mean pound of mass or pound force. Pound for what? I haven't been this confused since I watched Magic Mike. <laughs> the most ridiculous thing about all of this, every single one of these Imperial measurements what? are legally defined by the metric system. America is already using the metric system and most of the population is oblivious to it. Freedom, America, guns, pew pew. Ooh, <laughs> the foot is legally defined as 0.3048. Uh, I'm sure when, Amer when Americans watch this video, they were like, what? Punch this guy, punch this guy. What? But he's, he's making some sense. Though he's, he's mocking the US a bit, but it's making some sense here. The the imperial system makes no sense. It's too complicated. And maybe you could say that, oh, maybe your brain is not sharp enough to handle all that. But <laughs> even if your brain is sharp enough, it makes no sense at the end of the day. What the hell? Meters. The pound is legally defined by 0 0.435 kilograms. Why? Because the metric system is run by the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, a neutral international organization whose sole mission is to create a global language of science who America is a member of. And they have succeeded in an awe-inspiring way. In 2019, the final metric base unit, the kilogram, stopped being defined by human artifacts and is now, like all other metric units, defined by the laws of physics. In 2019, it ceased being defined by this hunk of metal, and began being defined by Planck's constant, which is defined as 6.626 by 10 to the minus 34 kilogram meter squared per second. Of course, to use this as a definition, we need ways to define the meter and second. The meter is defined as the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum in one divided by 299,792,458 of a second. Okay, so how do we define a second? A second is defined by the hyperfine transition frequency, which is the frequency of radiation which will cause an electron to jump from two closely spaced low energy states in a cesium-133 atom. I've never actually thought of it like this, actually. Like this, using I, I mean, this, this is one of the reasons why, you know, going to school in a place in my, like my country where most of the things is just for you to read, write your exams and pass. Lots of this kind of practical, like trying to uh, defining that second like that. I've never, I've never seen it that way. Never, I've never really seen it that way. I mean, this like makes me feel some kind. It makes me feel dumb, to be honest, because most of the time, like it's, a lot of that's why when people in my country go to um abroad, you know, they used to excel in terms of like education. From what I heard, I heard, I heard that Nigerians are like one of the most Best performing whatever whatever in the United States currently. Part of the reason is that the way we, the way we are taught here is so um, what will I put it so abstract 
no practical involved. Everything is just okay. Read this, read this, know it, go write it in exam and all that. But when you now go to these foreign countries, they show you in a practical manner, which will plaster in your brain. You'll be able to remember it. Like it's, it's actually very, um, better explained. You understand what I'm saying? Because of the fact that they're using practical to explain something to you compared to just reading it in some big, large book. And your brain is all over the place. Having you're having headache all over the place. But in a situation where they're actually showing you how a second is showing you how all these metrics are, it's actually ridiculous. Like it's actually really, really ridiculous seeing this thing like this. And I'm really feeling really bad about myself right now. But whatever. This is the I guess this is the hands that I've been dealt. So I have to live with it. But it's really interesting seeing it like seeing it this way. It's really interesting closely spaced low energy states in a cesium-133 atom. Each of the base units are defined like this, using the unchanging language of the universe as its yardstick, or should I say, meter stick. It's a beautiful and inspiring language that transcends the realm of humans, and for that reason alone, you should strive to use the metric system. Yeah, Understanding you should. the language of the universe is a superpower, and there is... Wow, I actually learned a lot in that video. Like, and at some points I was feeling bad about myself because I just this guy was just defining a second. This guy was just defining a second right now, and <laughs> I've never seen I've never seen that kind of definition in my life. I've never even understood that kind of definition ever like that. But it's actually this is why I started this kind of channel. This is why I started YouTube. You know, um, learning a lot of things that. I'm not really, I'm not really privy to, you know, in my own, in my own life, in my own upbringing, learning all these things. And I'm, I'm really, really enjoying this stuff. Like, even if I may not be having views or anything, but that is fine. Um, what am I, what, what, what am I losing just to come here and watch videos that I'm actually enjoying, to, enjoying. And that is great. Like, it's, it's, um, it's really, really interesting, man. The US, stop using the imperial system. I know it sounds cool. It sounds cool. I, I can accept that. Like, uh, pounds, um, you know, all that stuff. It's, it's nice. It's nice. It sounds, it sounds great. But, like, it makes no sense. It really does make no sense. It's all over the place. I mean, at least, you know, just making mathematics harder. Seriously. No wonder when people come, like, my passage should not be like it's already hard kind of for a lot of people and i'm making it harder for them it's ridiculous anyway um that was a very interesting video i really enjoyed it i was like and it, i really learned a lot in the video i hope you guys enjoyed it with me if you did hit that like button to get this video out to more people i really appreciate it, it really helps me out a lot thank you for watching love you guys